So now that we've made our folded paper dummy and numbered our pages to see where our layout's gonna take us, let's go ahead and create the content that we're gonna use to make these booklets. Go into Adobe InDesign and create a new document by either by doing File New, clicking a new document kind of touch icon or command N if you're on a Mac, control N if you're on a Windows computer. That brings you here. Now, I'll go through this as quickly and efficiently as I can as we're gonna need for this project. For this project of making our 16 page booklet, we are going to leave facing pages turned on. I often turn it off, but for this, it's actually useful. I'll uncheck the primary text frame. We don't need it to automatically make that, that's silly. Intent is definitely print. Number of pages, it's a 16 page booklet, isn't it? So we're gonna start with 16 pages. I would like you to use the letter half size and your choice of orientation based off the dummy you folded. My dummy was landscape, so I'm gonna choose the landscape orientation because that should match. You can ignore golems and gutters for this unless you want guidelines to have multiple columns of text, in which case, by all means, play around with that. Um, I'm not going to use that on mine. Margins, for this, I like to, and typically like to, set it to a quarter inch, 0.25. That is gonna get me set up to have a good safety zone around my edge. The first demo that I'm going to show is how to do this with a no bleed bust cut setup. So we're not going to be allowing for extra area to trim off. Remembering of course, that bleed is a way of pretending that we can print to the edge of a paper. We can't, no matter what, some physical device in your machine has to hold the paper. And so you can't print to the edge. It's gotta be held somewhere. So what do we do? We print a little bit bigger than we need, we trim off the edges. It's like making a sandwich with no crust. Um, you can't just make a sandwich with no crust because you can't bake bread without there being a crust on it. So mom has to sit there and cut the crust off for you picky, picky eaters. Anyways, that's how that's standard practice for printing. If you want it to look like we go to the edge, you actually print bigger than you want and cut off the edges and that's called bleed. I may have instructions later on how to do this project with bleed. It makes the actual signature layout section a little bit more technical than I would like for an intro video. Uh, if I have time, I'll produce a second video showing how to do that with those tweaks. So we're just gonna do margins. And these margins here are just gonna keep us away from the edge. It's like painting a yellow line before you fall off the edge of a curb. So you know not to go past it. We're gonna leave bleed at zero for this one and hit okay. And of course, the way share screen works these days, let me go jump back in over here. And so here is our document. Let me zoom out so you can see the whole thing in one look. So with facing pages, it puts inside pages for a book next to each other visually here on your screen. And then it puts the front and the back cover by themselves. Typically speaking, Except for a few minor changes, there's not that much practical difference between facing pages and not. It's all about how it looks while you're working on it in the creation section. I should also mention that while, you, and I should have said this earlier, while you're looking at this document, our 16 page document in what I'm gonna call reader spreads, does not look anything like the dummy we just made. That is very much on purpose. I do not like to mix imposition and layout into the same phase of a project. I don't think that's a good idea because if you need to rearrange something or reorient something, there's a chance you're going to lose your positioning or your proportions, or you might try to move something from one page to another and it doesn't all copy. I don't, just don't think you should mix those two. Plus even just down to, I'm not that great at multitasking. So I try not to overtax my brain with multiple different types of tasks. Document creation and the artistic layout, why that's all a creative function. That's you making something that looks good. That's you flexing your, your right brain, your creative side, and trying to create something that talks to people and communicates well. But in position, getting it lined up according to a signature and a dummy you folded, that's technical work that pulls from a different part of your brain and you're working towards precision. And I find creativity and precision, although I love using them together, it's best if you do one than the other. So in our workflow for this project, we're gonna create our booklet as single page PDFs here. And we're gonna take the output from this file and lay that 
into another document that's actually going to do the imposition and the signature page facings. Okay, so when this is all set up, let's start by doing some things. I'll start on my outside cover here. <clears throat> there we go. So remember, there's multiple ways to do this. You can drag and drop a file, or you can do a file place. I'm going to place an image on the front and put in a title. So allow me a moment to get this in here. So I'm going to do a file place and D and bring in the image. I, whoop, sorry. That, of course, activated something in Zoom, not in InDesign. Let's try it again. Command D. I'm going to choose something called star twilight jpeg. And this is the image that I use for my front cover. Because if you didn't catch this already, I am going to be creating a book of sea shanty lyrics. Now, I'm trying to keep my image inside the margin box, which was a quarter inch. And that's true for all sides, except not for the spine side. So I'm going to enlarge this a little bit. I'm going to click inside the image on that little circle in the center so that I'm moving the picture itself now. Oops. I had meant to have shift held down. That was caps lock. There we go. To scale that up to fit. Um, the edge that's going to be folded, you can print right up again. So that's not going to be a problem. The same level as trying to trim an edge off. So I've placed this here. And I'm going to go ahead and put some text on top. Oops, caps lock is still on, isn't it? Let me show you a thing about that. So I accidentally hit caps lock instead of shift. So let me show you how to fix this. You can go up to type, change case, and I'm going to make this into title case. Then I'm going to go up, I'm going to choose something called small caps, which is larger and smaller capital letters, which is something I like. And I'm going to go ahead and center this to the middle of the text box. And if you make your text box the width of a page, and you really want something centered to the page, now you have a chance, there you go, eight and a half, to make sure it's centered, making it bigger to fit. I'm also going to change it to a font I actually want. Currently, it's on Minion because that's the standard I like for my booklet, Adobe Jensen. It's one of the older European typefaces. This is a 17th century Dutch font, as opposed to my other favorites, which are 17th century English and French, respectively. Uh, the three major world powers of that era, they all made their own typefaces, literally their own shapes of letter forms. Um, the English one is Caslon, the French one is the prettiest, and it's Garamond, but the Dutch one, Jensen, I just, something about it. Anyways, so this would be an acceptable page for your book, especially for a title page. And this is uh, utilizing a couple things. So you can see it is black text on a white background, which is the easiest thing to see, and an image below it. And that is, in fact, if I even want to make the window smaller again, this is an acceptable page in a book. No problem at all. Full credit. But if you haven't learned anything about your instructor, you should know that when it comes to things creative, I'm a bit of an insufferable show off. So let me show you some things you can do to, you know, make it a little bit more interesting, which also gives me a chance to talk about visibility a little bit. So let's do this. I'm going to make the image. A little bit larger. So that it takes up the whole front page. I'm also going to take it to that spine. So like the spine wrap idea. Um, now you can no longer really see my words. The songs of the sea is still there, but it's not that visible. If I hit W, I can go to a preview, which gets rid of all the guidelines and out outline frames and shows you what kind of what it's going to look like when you print it. So the issue here is that the letters, Songs of the Sea, is too close in tonal range to the background. Uh, humans primarily see light to dark differences. That's what our eyes are built to do. That's why books are normally black text on white paper. It's huge visual contrast of as light as we can go and as dark as we can go, so we can clearly see the edges of what we're looking for. Humans, human vision is based off of edge detection. That's why camouflage always tries to break up the outline of what you're looking at. That's why it breaks up a person or a tank into sections of different colors 
so that your eye might not associate it together as one object, trying to obscure it. Furthermore, if you're using camouflage, your goal is to make it so that the contrast between the colors of the person or the vehicle or whatever it is you're hiding is greater than the contrast between it and the background because your eye looks for the heaviest part of contrast as the defining outline of a shape. So if you can make different parts of it seem to have different amounts of contrast in the background, then you might not see the object as an object. It disrupts our visual recognition. Taking that back to our designs here, because we do want to see what we're writing. We want people to immediately be able to read it. Here's the rule. If you are putting text on top of an image or a texture, the contrast between the letters in the background must be greater than the contrast between the background itself. For this one up here, it's easy. I'm going to take my text and make it white. White text on a dark blue and sometimes black background is strikingly, dramatically visible. You can see that from a mile away. That's great. But that's also because it's over an area of the image that's homogeneous. It doesn't matter so much about color. It matters about the light to darkness. If you use different colors, I mean, if I made this red, just as an example, it's still not going to be as visible because yes, red and blue do clash with each other. But if the red and the blue are the same level of light to dark, it's a lot harder to see what you're seeing. But let me show you my counterpoint to this before I fix it. If I take the same thing down here to the part of the image that has more light to dark, where there's a railing and a deck and some rigging, down here, you start to lose some of the words. It becomes very difficult to make out because there's too much contrast in the background. Hopefully this shows you what I'm talking about. I'll take it back up to the top. So that's a good place to start. Let me say on a sidebar that uh, I used to work with tall ships and sailing in the maritime museums back in my youth. And uh, with the late sea shanty craze that's been hitting online this year, it's interesting for me that now the rest of the world finally has the songs that are stuck in my head stuck in their head too. And it's not a bad thing. There's some good songs. And some of them will be represented in this booklet. After much to do and a quick swap out so I didn't have to spend an hour or six doing this live with you on a video, here is my finished initial layout here. Let me zoom out a little. I'll show you the whole book all at once and I'll zoom back in. This is my booklet. Currently in this format here with the reader spreads, it's set up so that as you scroll through it, you can see all the pages in the order next to their friends where they're going to be. Not necessarily the strange inside out, upside down, strange order that it's going to become when you use your folded dummy. So this is all my pages. I have text and pictures together. A lot of times I have my text over a background, just again, because I'm a bit of a show off and enjoy doing that. And I think it's a fun look. You are not required to flourish this hard, but it's fun. So you go through, we have photos, we have images. I'm still a little not sure if my lever Johnny is visible enough over the rigging here because there is a good amount of contrast between the light brown lines and the dark black of the spar there. It's the best I could do unless I start messing with the image, which is also possible. For this sort of problem, by the way, you could always lay down a background bar so that you no longer see the image behind it. And you can even make that background bar shaded, but not fully there. So you have a darker spot and that helps homogenize and darken the background so you don't have as much contrast and to increase the contrast of the image. But I'm just gonna let this one ride because uh, I think it's good enough. He says, wincing. I don't have text on every single page. The back cover, my inside cover liners of the maps don't have extra words. Uh, a lot of these songs are rather long and use a lot of space. And I wanted it to be a picture book as much as it is a book of lyrics. So from here, don't forget to save Command S, Control S. And as you work through these programs, I hope that you've developed a twitch as I have where you just kind of randomly reflexively hit Command S. Always save your work. You do something you like, it's a great time to celebrate and save. You just undid some problems that didn't work out, save it again. The more you save, the less issues you'll have when inevitably at some point a laptop battery runs out or the power gets shut off the place 
you're working in or whatever goes on that causes your computer to turn off when you weren't planning on it, make sure you've saved. It's a, it's a lifesaver. Okay, so with my, doc, my document all ready to go, let's get ready for the part where we're going to impose this into our booklet. So I'm gonna export this with a file export or command E if you like the keyboard shortcuts. And I'm gonna send this in here. I'm gonna rename this as I've done a test file. Um, renaming helps. You'll notice my really boring, boring name, Shanty Booklet Reader Spreads number three, no bleed. Um, you can name your stuff much more cleverly if you like, but I have found through hard experience and some uh, some bad times that you don't want to be too clever. Don't name it something that's really funny to you right now that you're not going to remember in four years because sometimes you actually have to go back four years later and find something. Name your files boring. Okay, so I'm gonna make this a PDF print, not interactive. So the export, we're gonna to wanna to choose high quality print. Now here you can see I have the word modified in parentheses. And that's like if you're going grocery shopping and you're buying any sort of canned, I mean like jarred good, like, I don't know, pasta sauce or uh, jelly. It always has that little pop up top or even Snapple drinks. If you wanna know how old I am, yeah, Snapple was cool at one point and they were all in glass bottles. Um, anyways, you have those little pop toppings that go pop when it's been opened so you know if it's been opened and tampered with. That's the same thing here with the modified. If you know what you did and you know that you made a good choice and a good change, well, then you should save the preset as something else anyways. But the point is, you don't necessarily know if you or someone else who might use your computer made changes to these settings without you knowing it or made changes you don't remember that are going to cause you problems. Always start fresh and go straight back to high quality print. And if you're going to make changes, make changes. You don't need to make any changes for this one because it has no bleed and a lot of the other stuff we're not going to use on this project. So we're just going to say, go ahead, export as pages, not spreads, and make sure you're doing all pages. Note that it is possible to choose individual pages to export that could come in handy for you in other parts of your life, but not this project. We want all of it. And we say export. So now you can see the output that I've made from exporting this PDF gives me this. 16 pages you can see at the top of my book. Front cover, inside cover, my forward page, which is kind of a pun because it's the forward part of the ship. See what I did there? See what I did there? And then one half of the page, the other half of the page. Beginning of the next page, the image for the next page. Center spread. Spanish ladies, Lever Johnny, some men tugging out a flapping sheet and some tossing sea, inside back cover and my outside back cover. And so you can see that's all individual pages. You can see that on whichever side is going to go towards that middle fold does not have the white border or the white lines as you might want to call it um, because it doesn't need it. You don't need to have bleed where you have a fold. Anyways, We'll come back for another video for the final bit of actually doing the layout with this file and how to place it into uh, in position inside InDesign. We're going to go back to InDesign, but instead of composing a new document, we're going to go ahead and bring this PDF and place it in there. All right, stay tuned for the next video.